Hey, I'm Sam Clark with Crimson Education, and today I'm going to be reading a student's Common App Personal Statement essay that helped her get into Brown University early decision. Let's do it. So I want to reiterate, this is not my personal statement essay, but rather um, an amazing student who was gracious enough to share her successful essay with us. So I'm going to read that essay today, do a little bit of analysis afterwards, and hopefully you can gain something from it, gain some insights as to what makes for an effective Common App personal statement. So this student chose one specific prompt for the personal statement. There's a number of different prompts. I'm of the opinion that you can essentially write about whatever you want to and you can find the prompt that kind of fits it. The prompt she chose was, some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent so meaningful they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, please share your story. And without further ado, I'll read her essay. Passover is always a crowded holiday in our house. The day before our week-long celebration of freedom begins, our kitchen is filled with three generations of women blasting 80s hits and the smell of onions. My mom always reminds me to wait before putting trays hot from the oven onto the counter because, quote, remember when I accidentally made the glass tray filled with farfel explode? I laugh and form sticky dough into knedlach for the chicken soup. For as long as I can remember, I've helped prepare this exact meal, the haroset, the farfel, and the knedlach. Until I was tall enough, I stood on a step stool, carefully following the recipes that my great-grandparents in their East European shtetls passed down to me in my family's Sao Paulo apartment. I read the family's cookbook's instructions over and over, making sure that I was doing everything exactly right. I measured out ingredients, chopped vegetables, set timers for the oven slowly and attentively. I felt it was my duty to carry out these tasks precisely, identically. But with time, this routine became repetitive, mechanical, mundane. These old songs reign in my ears. I sighed as I cut up yet another carrot. I dragged my feet to set up the table. I started to tire of doing the same things over and over, year after year. Naturally, however, I realized as the years passed, repetition is not an exercise in vain. Repetition yields small but meaningful growth. Personal touches become traditions in and of themselves. Every year, I'd added my own touches to the holidays proceedings. I'd incorporated customary ingredients, leeks, potatoes, and bitter herbs into new dishes. I'd changed the positions of the wine glasses to prevent spilling. These were simple changes, but slowly they became important parts of our Seder. I followed the same rules and traditions, but the dishes grew more complex and the tablecloth, thankfully, cleaner. Later on, it's time for Seder. We gather around the plastic tables set up in our jam-packed living room and begin telling the story of our people. Most of the Seder is scripted, but we recount it with fervor, as if the story were new to tell and hear every year. And in some ways, it is. Though we sit through hours and hours of storytelling and praying, we always find new ways to build on our traditions. We turn old Hebrew melodies into Brazilian funk songs. We scatter the table with masks, stickers, and drawings that represent different parts of the narrative of Passover. We allow our experiences from each year to expand the way we look at the story already heard so many times. This is what makes Passover and tradition so special. Each year, we create new meanings, memories, and ideas. We retell the same stories, stories that are repeated across generations and across the world, only to find that there is more to uncover. It is from repetition that novelty emerges. Acknowledging the past's connection to the present opens up to us possibility, innovation, and insight. Through preparing the same meals, I come up with new recipes. Through telling the same stories, we found new angles of interpretation. And I could see this now in everything else that may have otherwise become tiresome. I repeat the same knit and purl stitches to make a new sweater. I replicate the same procedures in the lab daily to get valid results regarding plant growth. I play the same scales with students in my music program until they have dominance over the guitar. Yes, repetition can, at times, seem pointless and annoying. But when I think of sitting with the same people around the same table and to the sound of the same songs on Passover, it fills me with excitement for the new things that come out of our Seder every year. So that's the essay. Uh, a little bit of a quick discussion of the essay and why I think it's so effective. I think the student does a really good job about making an essay that is technically about her family, about her religion, about the tradition of Passover and of the Seder and how her family does it every year. And she makes it about herself and her own personal journey in a way that doesn't center herself in an aggressive way, but makes it clear that it's about um, her own growth. 
I think uh, a trap that students often fall into when they're doing something like the student does talking about a family tradition is it becomes very, very exclusively about that family tradition and I as the reader don't learn anything about that student. But what this student did a really good job of is, is doing that and revealing how her own kind of grappling with and relationship with, uh, with repetition changed over the years. She found it monotonous at first, it, it was a chore and then she kind of realized um, the beauty and the impact of repetition. She realized that it yields, quote, small but meaningful growth. Personal touches become traditions. And then I think she did a really good job in the final paragraph of connecting it to other parts, I assume, of her application, such as knitting, such as procedures in the lab for plant growth, such as uh, the music program that she runs where she teaches students guitar. She slipped those in in a way that was legitimately connected to the value that she ended up finding in repetition through her family satyrs. It didn't feel horseshoed in there. It didn't feel like she was bragging. It felt like a legitimate lesson that she learned. And then she reminded you, the reader, of some of her other accomplishments and some of the other aspects of her life that make her who she is. So a shorter way of saying that is if you're doing an essay like this where you're talking about your background, your culture, your religion, your family, traditions, make sure that it's also about you. That is the point of it. Connect that tradition to yourself and your relationship with the tradition and how you've grown and changed over the years um, to interact with that tradition. And I think that the student did a really good job of it. She obviously did a really good a job of it. She got into Brown University as a result of it. So congratulations to this amazing student who chose to remain anonymous, but was very nice to uh, lend us her essay. Um, and if you want help with your essays, uh, more than just uh, reading or listening to the essays of other students, you can click one of the links below to connect up with one of Crimson's academic experts for free uh, who can talk to you about the schools of your dreams, getting into them, the Common App, and everything else that goes with all of that. Um, I've been rambling plenty. I've been Sam Clark with Crimson Education. I hope you find this helpful, and we'll catch you next time.